you know, they led our path into future, uh, right from 99 when we started as PeopleSoft. Then we got into uh, BI and uh, we got into big data and Oracle Cloud. Um, you know, we do all sorts of um, uh, things in PeopleSoft area and Oracle Cloud area. And we have a really robust, mature big data practice that's actually uh, helping uh, customers in financial sector and uh, healthcare industry as we speak um, with our proprietary uh, big data Gati platform. Uh, that's a different topic, and we can you know discuss more about those and different webinars. And uh, the things that we are really proud of are you know our customer satisfaction rating and. Uh, uh, the employee retention and employee satisfaction rating. And I think uh, the number one reason that we attribute all our growth to uh, and success to is our core values of, um, again, ERPA, right? So um, moving on to just, you know, a sample representation of uh, the awards and recognitions and certifications and whatnot. Um, as you can see, we are Oracle Platinum Partner, uh, Cloud Standard. Uh, you know, uh, or we have activities going on and implementations with um, HCM Cloud and you know the financials and um, you know uh, the CRMs of the world um, with the uh, Oracle Cloud flagship products, uh, right? So, and uh, I think the ones that I'm really proud of are the top uh, workplaces and the best places to work. Uh, you know, this is something, again, the reason we are successful is because of uh, the best people and best um, uh, practices that we bring. And um, the certain, um, you know, recognitions from the market are the CMMI maturity level three that shows to the maturity of our organization and the process oriented uh, nature of uh, what we do. So. Again, these are again things that we bring to the table in addition to uh, our deep expertise in uh, Oracle Cloud. Ravi. Thank you, Kiran. So, coming to the meat of it, I'm sure uh, many of you are today either in a situation where you've been getting a deluge of uh, requirement from your business asking for new solutions or, you know, drive from your line of businesses around modern functionality or um, you know getting your analytics or dashboards in front of your uh, cxos where uh, it has been in the past more um, work from an it standpoint to develop those or even come up with the latest social collaborative approach or uh, for that matter having it mobile ready um, at the same time, there are quite a bit of noise that's out in the industry that actually does say, you know, there's, there's tons of cloud uh, thing that's out there. Everybody should go to cloud uh, without having thought about much insecurity and stuff like that. So there is quite a bit of noise, which can be filtered into good signals as well. And you would see that based on the industry trends and not only the industry trends, but also the um, Gartners of the world and the um, IDCs of the world that actually kind of uh, predict what is there and what is working and what is not. And similarly, I'm sure there's a quite a bit of you working in the industry, have your own industry peer pressure as to what do we do? How do we go to cloud? Oh, we are going to cloud. Are you ready? Um, and where is our starting point and things like that? So these are initial challenges of just embarking into a cloud journey. We here, we are here. We understand that. We, uh, we heard about it. So, like I was mentioning and more into detail, so what is really driving these deluge of questions or the or the uh, um, pressure that everybody is talking about, right? It's basically from a technology standpoint, how to have an automated uh, updation or a regular um, release upgrade that I could do without having to spend a whole lot of dollars uh, and not getting much of ROI for new functionalities. Um, technologically, I got to be in the latest and greatest sustaining um, solution. Uh, if you are PeopleSoft or in the past uh, EBS um, or, or JD Edwards, I mean, they are all on-premise solutions. They do work great, but they are more tactical in nature. Um, you need to get more strategic, and that's where, you know, um, uh, from a technology standpoint, things are moving forward. So similarly, you want to consider uh, some financial decisions. Um, as to you know how do I how do I lower my IT budgeting? I'm not talking about elimination of staff. It's more around 
how the capex are not really capex and it's our, if it is a capex it's more focused around assets versus the the physical assets versus the actual software which can be now as a service and can be borne by the businesses uh, for operating um, their their own uh, business needs so that that would also definitely push towards the need for a specific uh, SaaS based application and uh, similarly from a competency standpoint IT uh, there is there is tons of new stuff obviously there's going to be a technology update you want to make sure that your people are retooled retained and whatnot but at the same time why don't we just focus pure on innovation and core that is needed for your business and let the experts take the um, data center piece or the administration piece out of the business. So that's another big reason as to why um, the SaaS is getting popular and why there is a push towards it. Uh, last but not the least, this is, this is going to be more streamlining. I'm sure tons of people that actually have a specific uh, on-premise solution today have customized it to the core that you can run your business. Now, your business that has been run will continue to run the way, but can be more futuristic and can be enabled by the technology that is out there. I'm sure every single business these days need to actually have a, a, a social arm, uh, need to be mobile enabled and need to be agile. So that's where there is, there is a need from a business transformation as well, where you can eliminate your customization and adapt to the uh, modern best practice that are out there. So um, I'm sure there will be a lot of questions. So I would recommend let's keep going on questions if you have any um, on the chat. This is actually in a listen-only mode, but keep going with your questions. Uh, we are not going. To, we want to ensure that we answer all the questions if we are uh, done early enough to be able to answer the questions that are going to come in the uh, chat. We definitely would love to, but if not, then we will definitely get back to you with the answers um, after the session. So, yeah. one, thing, one thing that I wanted to mention there was, uh, you know, the cloud application, we, we totally understand and realize the cloud application may not be the solution for every single person out there, right? It, it may be, um, you know, um, some other approach uh, in a given circumstance. So, uh, what we are good at is providing you with an unbiased uh, uh, opinion and also all the basis of you know how you can make this decision uh, you know what are the logical things that you should consider um, and uh, practical things that you should consider along this journey so um, you know so you can expect all of those from us in um, you know through this presentation and also after the presentation as well Ravi so yeah. So, so like like what Kieran said, it is this is this is not about just jumping into the cloud. This is going to take a baby step, and and this this whole on-premise to SaaS application from an overall move is God going to be overnight. It uh, in many cases it is not going to be lift and shift. So, the, it is not only dependent on your um, readiness, your acceptance level, but also the readiness from a market or the product standpoint. So what we're going to talk about today is, is, is predominantly our approach, our roadmap that, I, that will help you make a decision considering some key factors like the core competency, financial, uh, technological, and the business need, how our roadmap can get you to go through the SaaS mo model. Now, again, like I said, or like what Kiran said, it's not going to be completely, but again, you will see that in the further upcoming uh, slides as to how we gradually move towards uh, the ultimate goal. So, what are the what are the needs of a cloud roadmap? I think the consideration of the factors that we did mention. I'm sure where you are today, uh, and if you are um, attending this webinar, is predominantly because you do care about how do I get to a roadmap. Either you are in the process, or you are looking already have done something and looking to move to implement it. So what what is the need for this roadmap? The key needs that I would see is, is essentially from a business standpoint, a right solution to your business requirements. Now, granted, business won't care if it is cloud or on-premise, but 
I think what is important for them is is to be more modern. So that's the modernization is one of the key need. Uh, optimization in terms of IT operations and efficiency, right? And then again, we you probably need a diff, uh, step-by-step approach without having to travel the ocean uh, to get everybody out there. Definitely be more strategic. So think about how you can use your talent pool in that aspect rather than making it more work towards uh, tactical and the way on-premise works in the past. And then identify quick wins, right? I mean, you want to test the waters. So make sure that there are specific parameters that you can take into consideration and then jump and um, identify these quick wins uh, by slowly implementing those specific uh, modules or you know functionalities on cloud and make it um, seamless to the uh, users and the rest of the businesses. And then at the same time, work on a plan where you can actually get onto uh, cloud in the future further down um, years or quarters to come. So these given the need of those specific roadmaps, I think one of the other aspects that would definitely need to be considered are certain factors, because this is what is going to drive in terms of how you define this roadmap. And these are the factors that we will consider while working with you to define the roadmap. So so the key is definitely when we come and talk to you is, is articulating the business strategy. So in terms of how modern you would want to, what are, what are the key customer values for you? So that's something we would definitely want to be discussing and identifying it. We want to make sure that it considers the global needs. If you are global in nature, we talk about the global needs and then the local compliance at the same time. So uh, if, you're, if you are from a um, um, financial industry, then talk about specific uh, uh, compliance that is more government related or regulation related. So at the same time, if you're globally uh, present, so talk about the needs from overall approach rather than just specific to those where you are running your uh, project from. Uh, similarly, adopt to the modern industry best practices and, you know, shed your inhibition of having customizations the only way for your process running. Um, and, and I will explain this further in detail as to why, uh, because there is a need of a customization. We get it. There will be a need of certain customizations, and that's what we are also taking into consideration uh, when we are putting a roadmap to you. And then you will see in the next upcoming slides how we take that into consideration. Similarly, change management is one of the key things. Um, because it's going to be a gradual approach, um, it's not going to change overnight. It's not an overnight change management for you. It will be a step-by-step, -step, and that also because it's step-by-step, -step, the training is one aspect of it, but overall communication, overall organizational readiness, all that matters when it comes to um, uh, moving to cloud or having, a pro having an approach towards cloud. So that's basically your cultural awareness, your organizational cultural readiness uh, to have a shift in paradigm, um, like going from an existing on-premise to whatever uh, cloud or coexistence or whatever. And then uh, last but not the least, uh, create a strategic talent pool. So think about your, so we do consider uh, while preparing this roadmap, what about the pool that you would have today? Uh, maybe it is IT, maybe it is business. Some are trained, some are not. Uh, some need to be retooled. So think about think about from a, from a standpoint. Uh, let's take let's take an example here. Would be like you have a, a good uh, Oracle PeopleSoft uh, solution for your HCM, which includes payroll, for example. Now payroll is more tactical, you know. It's, it's, it's going to be run no matter what. Yes, there need to be some bad checks and balances that needs to be done. But at the same time, you don't have to have your key people running payroll. It can actually be outsourced. And there are some good industry experts that actually do a good job with it. And then you focus on your strategy of having the best of the talent within the organization. So that's the kind of a trade-off between... So be open for that, be thinkful through it, and that's the kind of a consideration as well that we bring in uh, while our discussions with you to create the roadmap. So, um, yeah, go ahead, Kiran. So, uh, do you want to uh, take a pulse of, uh, you know, 
uh, where people are in in their roadmap preparation today so that you know we can we can shed light on you know where uh, where uh, individual companies Correct. exactly i was yeah are. yeah i exactly was going to do that so basically i just uh, turned on a poll for you guys to just understand what your cloud strategy is are we uh, still evaluating any potential need for going to cloud or still in the process of thinking through or you have somebody already identified to to move to a cloud based solution so if you can um let me know um in in uh, uh in terms of uh, where you stand and uh, where you want to be right so i mean i'm sure people are here for a reason um so that i can understand okay i'll give it another couple of seconds and uh I got about 60% voted here so far. So that's good. Okay, so what I understand is about 75% I understood is, is you're still evaluating. So perfect. I think that's, I'm sure that's exactly why you are here and you are thinking about going towards that approach of defining a roadmap. So thanks, and then I'm sure this will be a, a beneficial session for you guys to understand where we go next in terms of what we have to offer. So we are definitely going to be uh, talking about defining a roadmap is going to be the last step of a step-by-step -step, um, process. And we will establish a starting point. Um, how do we come up with that is basically, obviously understand your need of a specific business area or if you if you want to understand the overall cloud move to your uh, for your organization we can do that so we have to identify that specific starting point once we identify it we'll be doing an assessment for which we have a, a methodology of, um, of of assessing um, the current tools solutions uh, technologies that you have and where you are looking from a future standpoint and then similarly, once that's done, we will actually establish a relevance to those aspects of functionalities that are current or future that you are expecting. Uh, when I say establish the relevance, its relevance is, is again split into multiple factors, which I will be talking in the curve, few slides further down. And then finally, define a roadmap based on this relevance. And then have a, when, when the roadmap is done, have a high level, um, project uh, timeline that kind of says, you know, you, you should be starting here with uh, uh, testing the waters in the cloud. You should be starting here with training, and then you should be going here with a specific uh, uh, um, go live of a coexistence approach, for example. So again, like I said, those are specific deliverables that you would see at the finalizing of the roadmap that uh, we deliver um, as part of the project. So with that, I think, well, let's talk about the assessment piece. So uh, once we established the uh, starting point, what we're definitely gonna do is, is understand and identify the key team members or the areas that you are going to talk. So for example, let's say you are interested into HCM and, and uh, uh, finance to begin with. Um, so obviously those will be the team members that we will uh, uh, have uh, workshops with uh, any kind of existing documentation we will talk uh, we will review through and then later we'll talk to the IT organization that is supporting that specific functionality and then based on the existing processes of the your robustness of the processes the the procedures that you have in place any um, um, hardware updates, any future projects or initiatives that you have in mind, considering all those or any missing factors, right, uh, that would be uh, basically coming up based on um, what we see that you do as a business versus what we see market is doing as a business. Um, so looking at those aspects will develop a roadmap. Now, this roadmap is not the final, final thing. This is basically a list of everything that you currently have for the current and then provide the future. Based on what we saw, we will document those and then we will be able to categorize them from a relevance factor, from an acceptance factor and a readiness factor. What are those? 
I will explain in the next slide. But I wanted to um, emphasize the point that these are your your functionalities, your your features, your uh, maybe it is current or future um, are going to be categorized in those three um, aspects. And once they are categorized, they will be actually weighed. So you they all will get a score. And based on the score, finally how it comes through, and based on the current spend that you have on a specific uh, uh, functionality from an IT standpoint or whatever standpoint you have, whatever the risks are, and the, the things like that con considered, will be able to define a justification of what makes sense for you to go ahead to do this in cloud? What makes sense for you to actually have it on-premise? So all this is the end-to-end -end approach from an assessment standpoint. So the, the overall process of getting through developing a roadmap ends with justification of what to do and what not to. How do we justify it? By getting the right scores defined Again, we won't be assigning the scores. It will be you as a customer that will assign the scores because you know what is really relevant for you. And then based on that, uh, we will be able to actually justify in terms of cost, risk, and those kind of factors, and finally come up with a roadmap. With that, what are those three factors? The relevance, the acceptance, and the readiness. So relevance, in terms of, let's say, obviously, when we will talk to you, we will be talking about specific uh, um, uh, uh, functionalities that you have today, right? And then specific uh, um, compliance factors that goes with it, risk factors those goes with it, any kind of enterprise uh, uh, architecture that, ha that you have. So we would want to know how relevant are those from those six factors or five factors within the relevance um, of a specific functionality for you, okay? Now, you see there is a software as a service and a platform as a service. There is a reason as to why this is being evaluated is because in some cases, it might be a direct fit to an existing application or a software as a service, but it might not be, it's, it's a very unique process for yourself, let's say, uh, even in the existing on-premise, you have totally customized it. That might be something also we would want to know from a relevant standpoint and see if it is a customization. If it is a customization, typically in software as service, you are not, you don't own the code, right? So you will not be able to customize it. But we can actually make sure we can adopt the process within the software to make sure it's software as a service. At the same time, if you cannot, we can identify the platform as a service. So this is going to clearly mention in the final document where you stand, what those functionalities stand. It's kind of a mapping already being done. Acceptance level. Now this is what I was talking about earlier, where we would want to know if let's take an example, if your organization is not a self-service oriented organization and you have a lot of managers that actually would want to do um, a, a compensation review, for example, or initiate a change in the organization of an employee. So those kind of things, if you are actually expecting uh, it to be self-service, but your managers are not, they are, they are still uh, uh, thinking that these are HR uh, team's job. Uh, it would be more tactical work that HR team does today and can become more uh, strategic in the future. So we would want to know the, the culture that's out there. The awareness in terms of what is enabling me uh, means to them, uh, mean, means to the managers or the employees, your partners or any, any for that matter, your vendors, what is enabling mean to them? So those are kind of acceptance level we would want to uh, test uh, for the functionalities that you have already established the relevance and the acceptance would be next. And then readiness. Now, what we do is um, take this aspects and then check from a, a solution standpoint, how quickly a decision can be made to, to get an adoption to this uh, cloud solution or any other market solution that is out there. At the same time, not only check your readiness of decision making or changing the principles or adopting to the modern best practice, not only checking your readiness, but also we, are, we check the industry trend. 
So definitely we would want to do this inside out, which is coming from you as to explaining us as to what is relevant for you, what is uh, how ready you are or how uh, acceptable that solution as a specific functionality would be versus how the industry is behaving. What is the time to market from a from a from a product standpoint? Like for example, I can give you is if if there is a solution, if there is a solution that you need today for campus solution, and you're looking for a cloud product. Now there are existing cloud, um, and this is very specific to higher education. So if there are there are very very uh, um, there are existing cloud solutions that actually kind of does what a uh, campus solution do but about 30% to 40% of what campus solution does. It is the market is not ready yet from a cloud standpoint. Similarly, if you look at if you are a manufacturing organization, there is, there is a quite a bit of process manufacturing or validation that happens for your uh, industries like uh, um, uh, life sciences or healthcare. Now those are not ready in certain uh, cloud products. So, so what are what are the trade-offs? Do we create a platform as a service? Do we actually do a coexistence? So we do an inside out and an outside in visualization of the solution and the uh, um, uh, products that are out there and then come up with the roadmap specific to um, what you would think is the right thing for you. So with that, I do want to ask uh, uh, the next question, like is there, are there any, um, cloud applications that you currently use i mean this is this could be the likes of uh, uh, the likes of uh, uh, conquer or more peripheral applications it's not going to be um, core to your business but more you're using conquer for uh, let's say expense reporting or um, uh, paleo or uh, success factor for your recruiting and those kind of things if there are any are really interested to know in terms of what you have um, today um, for uh, any cloud applications. Okay, I do see about, oh, that's good. So, good, so you know when I say in cloud, if obviously this is going to be a, a, a software as a service. So you are working on an existing model. So I do see quite a few people saying yes. So that's a good thing. So you are aware, right? So you are aware when I did talk about the overall um, industry where it is taking. So I'm sure that if you are going to use a, a expense reporting systems today, and if that's Concur or some kind of a solution, then it has its own benefits of having mobile, right? So you see that. So I'm sure that's exactly how we would want to um, uh, present ourselves for our business applications as well. Okay, good. Alrighty, let's move forward. So, you got to understand what is the approach. Then we talked about the uh, um, overall uh, relevance, the uh, um, acceptance relevance, and the uh, readiness criteria. Based on that, we'll be able to come up with sample deliverables. These are certain sample deliverables. I just wanted to highlight it so that you understand what is the value that you get at final uh, uh, discussion um, of this exercise. So basically, if you take an example here, take a core back office application. That could be any of your tons of applications, right? So it could be your recruiting, it could be your student financial aid, it could be um, your inventory management, it could be um, uh, accounts payable or vendor management, anything. So any of these, so we would like to rate them based on their individual business dynamics, the compliance-wise, risk-wise, what the factors are, how they are scored, how they are weighed and weighted. And once that's done, we do come up with a solution in terms of where is it that specific functionality fit in terms of relevance versus acceptance or relevance versus readiness, or a three-way uh, graph where it kind of tells us that, okay, it is highly relevant. And this specific example here, I want to bring it up, is because your solution is highly relevant for you to do business. But the market is not ready, and at the same time, your, your uh, acceptance level in the organization is 
minimal in terms of going to a cloud or a self-service way. So this kind of guides us saying that, okay, you know what, maybe this functionality is not ready right now to go to cloud. And that's where we actually table that to a, to a more of an on-premise work or to a, uh, maybe a coexistence approach where you continue doing certain things in your on-premise solution. At the same time, we actually go and uh, uh, think through cloud for certain other aspects. So that's a classic example here in terms of uh, um, a specific deliverable. Additionally, based on the uh, solution or the deliverable that you saw prior, we will be able to plot what are your solutions that's going to be on-premise, what can we be putting into a coexistence in the approach where a cloud is not as matured, so I'm going to have an integrated solution with the cloud solution. So it kind of, and we run it towards the SaaS model and also towards the platform model. In some cases, even infrastructure, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain that in a minute here. So let's say you decide that uh, you want to go to a cloud uh, model because let's take, for example, um, you have PeopleSoft for HCM, you have PeopleSoft for financials, and uh, you, you have a bare minimum IT team that actually manages it. And then your, your business is asking for you to uh, get into cloud because they want the benefit of cloud. Um, what, and, and using our tool, you came up with a solution that there the HCM um, makes sense to go to cloud because it, it is going to be, uh, it is well matured in the, uh, as a market is concerned and also your business is ready for acceptance from a cloud standpoint. So let's go do uh, HCM as a cloud solution. So what we also can offer at the same time is while your team, both from IT or business, is actually working towards making them enabling towards cloud, we can actually help you manage the PeopleSoft solution that's out there, or both from uh, either from uh, your own from on-premise solution, or we can manage and host it, and we can continue helping with. Uh, the existing solution that's out there till you are uh, going to cloud. So your team can work on strategic solution versus we can take over the tactical mundane job. And then once you're ready, then we can just get rid of the tactical mundane job and you are now doing it in cloud. And, so, uh, and Ravi, go ahead. I, I yep. see a question um, here. Um, you know, it's primarily talking about um, the on-premise to cloud transformations and uh, the challenges around the integrations, the system. Uh, so, you know, so we do realize and understand uh, um, that, you know, when we take an application to the cloud, it is not existing in a silo. It still needs to talk to all the other applications that are within the organization, the other ancillary applications, uh, and also, um, you know, they need to be in constant communication with um, outside uh, uh, applications such as, uh, you know, the benefits providers or uh, e-procurement punch-out providers or, you know, the school grading uh, related uh, grants integrations um, and, and so on. So uh, what we've been, uh, you know, what we have done or actually we have pre-built Several of uh, these integrations that are, um, you know, that are common, uh, commonly used in the industry, and uh, you know, we have uh, packaged, you know, uh, a wrapped up methodology and um, and standard libraries that we can actually deploy and uh, and do the integrations. And and in fact, you know, uh, here is one area where we actually leveraged a lot of intellectual property from our big data side of the practice. Uh, in terms of uh, the data processing and integrations um, and brought it into our uh, Oracle Cloud practice. So, um, you know, and so this is, I'm, I'm not suggesting that there will not be any challenges with integrations. Uh, you know, the uh, biggest area of focus for any cloud implementation uh, from the technology standpoint is, um, you know, uh, is focused on integrations and from the business standpoint is focused on the change management and transformation. So, uh, but you know, with the methodology and the standard libraries that we have built, 
and also the robust uh, the robust um, uh, capabilities that are are packaged within the Oracle Cloud um, to integrate with ancillary applications and outside parties. Um, you know, we do not see that as a, a, a major concern. Uh, you know, we have seen that, done that um, in this area uh, a lot. So, and Ravi, um, do you want to share some examples or anything? Yeah. So, sure. I, I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit. I'll, I'll go. This is this a little bit more technical to it. So like your on-premise solutions like PeopleSoft or EPS or JDE, you actually have a database in your premise. And what that allows you to do is write your own code. Um, so the integration issues that you definitely are talking about is when you go to cloud, you cannot write your own code. And what happens is in that case, how do you actually pull an uh, data in or send a data out? When it comes to Oracle, uh, as a cloud solution. It actually has a good tool that you can push the data out. Uh, when it comes to inbound data solution, you definitely require some translation of the data. Um, maybe it's a new mapping, maybe it is, maybe it is you know, uh, the, the way you would get it from a um, time clock that you would want to change it to review, look at it in a different way when it goes to payroll in Oracle Cloud, let's say. Um, you need to do some translation. So, that translation, the best industry practice to be done is by a middleware. Now, in the past, this on-premise solution is where you are writing the code. You are actually punching in some code, some, some uh, uh, programming languages that you do that actually would be able to generate the new file or you know, uh, consume the file. In, in, the, in the new world, in the new technology world, in, uh, using the middleware, it's drag and drop. You basically say this is a column A from the source, mapping it to column B to the target, and that's all you've done. So it's it's as good as maintaining. I'm not saying that it's uh, um, you don't need any middleware. You know, it's it's automatically going to happen like a magic. No, but at the same time, it is not as cumbersome and as difficult as it was in the past of maintaining it in on-premise. Hopefully, that answers the question. Okay. All right. So. One another deliverable along with what you will be looking at in terms of on-premise coexistence in the cloud is your your uh, need for having a clear roadmap from a basically if that is plotted against the cloud maturity as far as the solution is concerned. Um, it could be Oracle, it could be Workday, it could be whatever solution that is. If you consider from a maturity standpoint versus your readiness standpoint, the more strategic, if you look at any cloud solution that are out there, they have inbuilt um, uh, analytics in it. They have inbuilt mobility in it. They have inbuilt um, uh, social collaboration in it. And why? Because these are more strategic. Now, that's probably why, or not probably why, that's exactly why these solutions came up with came up with these uh, uh, more strategic uh, products out into the market before coming up with their uh, tactical solutions like payroll or for that matter, um, uh, manufacturing. These are more, these are needed for the business. But the thing is these, these require to be run on a day-to-day -day basis. And these are done like a mundane job, no matter day in, day out. Right, so those products are better to be thoughtfully done, having your strategic solutions upfront, uh, which will have a good brand impact on your employees, good brand impact on your customers, a good brand impact on your vendors. So the front end is perfectly all right, and the back end can slowly then move it. So that's basically the strategy um, of, of coming up with the roadmap. But again, so for you, you know, we could we could we could definitely work through this. Certain things might not be the right thing for you. Maybe you are because you have a recruiting solution in your existing uh, core HR solution, and you don't want to be moving that or touching that. Then maybe uh, talent um, acquisition, sorry, talent talent management or performance, and then compensation might be one another. Or for example, you don't have a you have a CRM solution 
but you don't have a good lead generation for you for that matter maybe that is something that you can take into consideration and put that more strategic as a solution up front so the what i'm trying to tell here is there are there are considerations in terms of risks there are consideration in terms of compliance there are consideration in terms of cost and consideration in terms of functionality that is seeked by you as a customer is taken into relevance at the same time we also look at what for all of these that you are looking for what is the right fit in the market whether it is ready for you to be used that is not only looking at product as a solution but essentially looking at cloud as a whole and then get get your gartners of the world or the foresters of the world kind of uh, talk to it and then come up with a specific road map something that looks like this okay and few more additional sample deliverables um i'll probably end this uh, deliverable by by mentioning that once the road map is kind of generated it kind of tells you uh, where do you want to start where do you want to end um, you know uh, maybe you do recruitment compensation and planning and budgeting you know do your uh, um, implementation with coexistence approach don't boil the ocean uh we will have minimal risk that is a justification piece obviously this will have a cost factor as well um same thing like let's say that's that's preparatory phase or phase 0 and then phase 1 you are ready to deploy some analytics on top of what you did here uh and this could go more in detail with entire um coexistence approach in the sense you do with your cloud that you actually started off and then you do the analytics for your uh um on premise as well put together so kind of thing and then this further what you see down here value justification that is going to be more from a, a, a price standpoint where it stands okay any more questions um during this time okay all right so i think i think this is this is key in terms of where we stand uh, of of um um uh, overall road map definition for your cloud journey right so i think i think i do want to poll here and understand are there any specific um concerns in terms of your current application so while you're doing that i just want to mention that in terms of what you're looking for your your um uh guidance through a um best practice or guidance through in terms of the right mix of having a cloud versus a, a on premise solution or you know I, there was a good question on the integration piece i mean they so so overall erpa i mean we can come and do the road map assessment definitely yes we have done the road map assessment we can uh, we have done the cloud implementation itself once you are ready with in terms of where your road map stands um we can start doing the uh, implementation uh, bits and pieces in uh, approach uh, once you have an application today let's say you do have uh, um hcm on cloud you don't have erp yet and you are looking to do it we can actually help you um support it i know once it's on cloud support is not exactly the same way like you would do it on on premise there is a big change and then i'm sure that is uh, that discussion is for a different day and a different topic in terms of how we help with that uh, that is also something we can do um and and good aspect one of the thing in cloud is this is people keep adding modules right and it's a very modular in nature unlike in the on premise you don't actually have to get all the products go uh start implementing everything together and then you go live everything together no you can be very modular in nature you can have it in a coexistence model you can have it uh, um all existing in uh, cloud or you know you do only analytics on cloud you keep your uh so there were different models given the models the fact is that you keep adding specific modules within cloud as you mature when you do that you got to keep in mind one of the most important aspect of rolling out a project over project is testing and when you want to do the testing 
What is important is your people are ready to test the existing functionalities and does not break. And also with cloud, whichever one you go to Oracle or Workday, they definitely have twice a year upgrades. So these upgrades need to be tested. So we do have a solution for our cloud um, um, aspects from both HCM and financial cloud at this moment is a testing as a service. So what that does is that takes the ambiguity in terms of uh, um, whether we have tested everything or not. There are certain test scripts that are ready based on based on the existing um, Oracle solution that is out there on cloud. It runs autonomously. Um, all you got to provide is the data, and then it will just keep running, and then at the end um, uh, spits out a good report that kind of tells you um, what has been passed, what has been failed, what that, and it will tell you each and every step it has gone through. So that's something that we actually bring as part of the application support services. And finally, the on-premise application hosting or support. So like what I was explaining at the beginning of it is let's say you do have um, an, an initiative to go to cloud. And you, it is because it is more strategic for your organization to work on, um, because it will help them to be retooled, because it is the it is the solution of the future. Uh, your your current supports the uh, current system that you are supporting, which is on premise. Actually, we can take it over for hosting, and we can support that while you are focusing on your uh, uh, strategic solution for the future. Okay, any questions um, before I move on? I see one question. Um, okay. What would you categorize as uh, the biggest uh, roadblock in this cloud journey? Okay, good one. I think that's a, that's a great question. So the biggest roadblock I would say is is your um, change management. I would not say it, it's a roadblock, but people think it's just a lift and shift and not completely understand that it is something that you are adopting to as a best practice. So keeping up with that kind of a broad mindedness um, and coming up with a plan to attack that education is the key for a successful cloud journey. Um, because even from an IT standpoint, it is a change management. People, you, you, even IT would think, you know, today, let's say, you have a, a solution in place and uh, something you want to customize and you put into your solution on premise and it doesn't work, you want a refresh. You tell your DBAs it is done overnight. That kind of thought process doesn't exist anymore. It, it cannot be done overnight refreshes and it's okay because you are not forced to do certain customizations and on top of it, whatever you call customization in on-premise is really not a customization in cloud. It is more of personalizations or more of uh, configuration because there's a lot of flexibility. Now, if I want to change a screen in on-premise, I would call that a customization. But if I want to change the look and feel of a screen in cloud, it is personalization. There is no customization. It is actually just few uh, um, uh, BMP files that actually I need to, or JPG files that I need to place at the right place, and my job is done. And or Oracle or uh, uh, Oracle as a product will not override it whenever they apply a patch. So I think that's that's predominantly uh, the biggest advantage is people are worried that it's going to go into cloud is going to impact them, but. Just keep, keep in mind that you would want to have a clear change management along your, uh, with your uh, journey of implementation. I uh, have another question. Um, okay. you know, we have a data warehouse um, in place today. Um, you know, the, how moving to cloud application, how would it impact on the data feeds, the ETLs, and the data warehouse? So you have a data um, warehouse in place. So, so in terms of ETL feeds, you already are talking about when you say ETL, it's a middleware existing middleware. So that's a good thing. 
So you have a big, uh, pu uh, big piece of the puzzle that is missing is already in place. So which is your middleware? Now, if you are able to do the ETL appropriately between uh, um, uh, target to the source, if you take consider Oracle as a target, um, then you definitely need the middleware which can easily push it out. Now you have data warehouse and it can continue to be on-premise if you have it on-premise. You don't have to keep it. Um, if you're only using it for uh, analytics from a uh, certain application standpoint, but if you're using it for more than just analytics, it's a different story. But if you're using it purely for analytics from a uh, business application standpoint, the cloud solutions are built on top of an uh, S-based database, which S-based database is nothing but um, multi-dimensional database so that you can actually report it easily. So the analytics, the uh, multi-dimensional uh, way of storing data, everything is inbuilt. Um, and one more thing I would want to add is, is the security. So if, you, if you're talking about single sign-on or you're talking about any kind of uh, role-based security, they are built with identity management inside the solution. Given the fact that they are built with an identity management, you don't procure that as a, as a new package. You don't procure that as a new module. It's already there. So it is, it is mandatory. So there are three main uh, aspects, or rather four. One is the ID management portion of it, which is already there. Second is the uh, um, analytics portion, which is already built in. Third is the mobile portion because every single thing are built um, uh, with mobile and web uh, in mind. And then the fourth one is the uh, social collaboration platform. So they are all enabled to be connected to your LinkedIn's or the uh, um, um, Facebooks of the world. Okay, and, uh, and I have another question. It says, does ERPA assist with migrating to Azure? Uh, as well or only to Oracle. So uh, here, you know, we are actually a Oracle partner, uh, Azure partner, and also Amazon partner, right? So from the application standpoint, uh, the Oracle Cloud is, happens to be the application, but if we are using infrastructure as service, um, you know, we are partners both at Azure as well as uh, Amazon. And, um, and in fact, you know, those are the platforms that we use uh, predominantly to host our uh, people's hub customers today. So uh, yes, we can assist customers in migrating to Azure and that's a different roadmap um, because that is looking more from the infrastructure and um, uh, a network topography and, uh, you know, uh, uh, and disaster recovery and load balancing. And, you know, it, those are different aspects of uh, the main management come in place. And um, in at ERPA we do uh, do that, um, but with a under a different practice. Okay, I know we have like about uh, two minutes to go, so I just wanted to put something onto your brain. Think about it, right? So without giving out, without doing the big exercise of going through the roadmap and whatnot, if you're quickly looking at a quick win. I just wanted to give you, I, I, I told you at the end of the day, I'll make your session worth attending it. So these are certain modules um, that you can think within the HCM, CRM, or financial space, uh, space that you can actually implement on cloud without having to boil the ocean, right? Now, what am I giving out of this, right? Uh, without having to do the whole um, um, roadmap that I talked about. Now, when we do the roadmap, one of the things that do we do bring it out is actually what makes sense in what order, right? Uh, in the sense, maybe um, rec recruiting might not really apply to you because you might be using Taleo and PeopleSoft, right? So let's say if that's a combination that you have today, then maybe recruiting you're good. Maybe we should be thinking about uh, switching some, uh, uh, if you're using Taleo Business Edition, maybe you should think about going to Taleo Enterprise Edition, or maybe even if you're telling Enterprise Edition, then how do you make sure that your structure that's going to be working with the cloud are going to work correctly or not? So those are kind of things also we look into our roadmap before we subject a specific solution to go one by one. 
So with that, I think um, that's my last piece of information that I would like to share today. Any more uh, points that you want to share, Kiran? Um, no, I, I think, you know, um, I truly appreciate everybody taking their time away from a Friday evening and joining us. Um, hopefully this was um, uh, informational. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, respond um, through email or through the question window right there. And um, as Ravi said earlier, we have a policy of no question left behind. Um, so we will answer every every one of them. Um, and um, you know we will uh, we can reach out, reach back out to you and if you want a product demo uh, we can do that um, and uh, and also thank you to the uh, friends from Caribbean who join um, you know it's again great to have you guys on the call um, so yeah all right I have one last poll out there if you guys can uh, take time to fill it uh, we should be good to go. Please let me know. You can reach out to my email or uh, Kiran's email um, if you have any questions. All right. Uh, All right. Alrighty. Thank you. I'll give you one more, 10 more seconds to close out the poll. Any more questions do we have on the chat box? Um, no, that's all I see. No. Okay. All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We'll talk to you pretty soon in another webinar. Thank you all.